Chapter 92 Asmahel's Testimony When the three had heard from the mouth of Asmahel this testimony concerning him, they became afraid and did not know what to do. Should they fall down before him and worship him? But then they would give him away, for the other patriarchs would notice it. Should they believe this testimony? For they thought by themselves, If we believe the testimony, we are captives before Adam and the others, for our awe and exceedingly great love for Asmahel will soon betray to the patriarchs that there is surely something extraordinary about Asmahel, since our attitude towards him is so exceedingly respectful and loving, which it necessarily has to be. If we do not believe this testimony, what are we then in the eyes of Asmahel? Nothing but public and plain liars and deceivers to our fathers, brothers and children. Or we can no longer utter a single word if we want to remain with the truth. For if we speak a single word about God, who is among us, but whom we, not believing this, deny in our hearts, we are, as already mentioned, liars and deceivers, as we want to convince the others that there may be something where our eyes do not even discover a shadow. If we act quite naturally as if Asmahel were still Enoch's pupil, how shall we fare then? On the one hand, we shall have to reproach ourselves and say, The Lord, our great God, our most loving Father, is here to learn from us. What is he going to learn from us worms in the dust, since every better word from our mouth has to come first from him, so that we are able to utter it? On the other hand, if we do that anyway under the cover of silence, our parents, brothers and children are cheated threefold. Firstly, by every one of our words, since we need to act differently from how we think in our hearts. Secondly, that we must pretend before them to preach and worship a God who does not exist anywhere and encourage them to deny the true God among and with us. And thirdly, that they, through a false love for a God who does not exist, will not and cannot possibly ever receive anything of the promises, since what you spiritually gain always depends on your love in spirit and in truth. Or, concerning our promise, would it not be as if we told someone in the dark of night? Listen, brother, if you are hungry, proceed a hundred steps straight ahead, and you will find a fruit-bearing fig tree which will fully satisfy your hunger. Knowing only too well that there has never been a fig tree at that spot, nor is one there now, or will ever be, since there is nothing but a yawning chasm of immeasurable depth, and we are hiding the real fig tree full of fruit behind our back. Following these thoughts, they fell silent and were at their wit's end. Then Asmahel opened his mouth and said to the three, Why do you doubt in your hearts? Could it be wrong to do my will? How can you think that I commanded you to do such a thing? And if you have any doubts, why do you now ask your heart and not me, who is in your midst? Or do you think that only the way your foolish eye recognises as such is the right one? Do you not say yourselves that my ways are unfathomable and inscrutable? How can you then still doubt and have such confused thoughts in your hearts? Or is your love for your fathers, brothers and children greater than mine 
that called into existence all things, also them and you, for life's everlasting perfection within and out of me? But if you believe that it is I, your Creator and Holy Father, in the frame of Asmahel, how can you still question whether what I advised you to do will be good and proper? Am I not more than Adam, whom I have made, and all the children I have awakened out of him? Therefore, do not worry, but follow my inscrutable advice, and you will be doing the right thing. For your words will be out of me, and your lessons for me will be lessons for you and your children, and your fathers will be pleased and shout with joy. But now I, too, still have to comply with Adam's will. Amen.